Hello Internet, welcome back to the theory of quantized fields. Our nice example PDF file. So what we are looking at is some output of the PDF parser and JBIG2 decoder that I'm developing on and off stream. And the example file is a scientific paper by Julian Schwinger. It's a scanned PDF. And what we see here is a nice example of a debug mode of my JBIG2 decoder where it uh, shows the, the outlines of the text region symbols that are placed on the page. So you can get a good understanding of how this image decoder actually works. So that would be the a view of the whole page. And you see that the whole page, the text at least, on the, and, and here this page has only text. So the whole page is made up of a so-called text region in JBIG2 language. And the text region in turn consists of symbol instances. The symbol instances are visible here because my debug mode colors them in, in different uh, shades of gray. And what you also see is a kind of the, the baselines of the, of the text region. They are called uh, strips in JBIG2. And these strips are a way to specify the vertical positions of the symbols using as few data bits as possible. So they, the, the file encodes the distance, the locations of these strips first, and then it, it encodes the vertical positions of the symbols relative to the strips in order to, um, in order to remove as much of the redundancy of the data as possible because you will typically have a lot of letters on the same baseline and they should then end up with very small coordinates in the same strip ideally. We see it does not work perfectly so here for example you have two strips um, because a single strip would be one pixel wide and here you see these are two uh, I think even three or four Yeah, but to get a, a good understanding of how this text region decoding works, you also see that um, symbols do not always correspond to single letters. Here you see that the combination of R and Y, for example, has been considered a sing one single symbol by the decoder. we might also be able to find some instances of combined letters that have actually been composited or aggregated, it's called in the, in the JPEG2 standard, aggregated into a derived symbol that combines the two of them. I'm not sure if I can now find an instance of that. Not right now, it seems. Typical examples for aggregated symbols would be the I and the dot of the I. Here they are two separate symbols using also a separate uh, strips for encoding the vertical position. And sometimes the decoder will recognize that particular combinations are very frequent and will combine them into a synthetic aggregated symbol that is also already supported by my decoder. So uh, another interesting thing is uh, 
I implemented also as a debug dump the possibility to look at symbol dictionaries. That would be the symbol dictionary that is used for this page. My code just puts these symbols in an arbitrary order here. So actually I use a nice uh, rectangle uh, packer code by uh, Steve Barnett that is available in the public domain. And I use it to pack the symbols into a bitmap and dump the whole thing as a PNG. And you can see the symbols used, so these nice integral signs, for example, you have uh, two symbols here because they look a bit different because one is missing a piece. You have lots of parentheses, for example. So you see that the decoder was not was not too greedy about combining uh, symbols, so it did not accept a lot of losses. But you can get an nice idea how such a symbol dictionary looks. You see here is the R and the Y that is combined into one symbol. Yeah, so this is one of <clears throat> one of the choice of having your own code is that you can try out things like this and you can really get a good visual impression about how things work uh, behind the scenes. And first I want to give you a bit of a summary how far the JBIG2 decoder is now. So most of the features of JBIG2 are implemented. The following things are, are missing. So let's take a look at our to-do list. The first point is actually, I think, complete, but I'm not entirely sure. Because as you will see, and this will be the first topic that we talk about today, it's very difficult to find, um, find good quality test data for JBIG2. That's one of the main problems I have right now. And we will take a short look at some test data afterwards. So um, the, the first feature, so compositing on the page and auxiliary buffers, I have this implemented, but it's hard to be sure that it is complete and correct without having good test data for it. Uh, color extensions are not yet implemented. I have no idea if anybody uses them, but there is at least some small test data for that. The main reason I have not implemented the color extensions yet is because, of course, as soon as you deal with color, you need uh, different pixel formats internally than if you deal with grayscale or black and white images. Uh, and this is something, so pixel formats is something I will need to address later anyway, but I don't know r right now which pixel formats I will really need. This depends a lot on how the PDF rendering uh, later will be implemented and how the compositing in the PDF display will be implemented and so on. So for example, it could be that for black and white images, we actually really use a black and white um, stencil, for example, or could also be that we actually convert them into RGB or RGB alpha. So this is, I think this is probably postponed until uh, pixel formats are or have been clarified. It's, it's not that important anyway, because as you will see in an example later, if people want to have color, they, I think they do, typically do not use the color extensions, they do something else with JBIG2. Then a user-defined Huffman tables are missing, they are actually not that hard to implement, but here I have zero test data. And I probably, I probably will have to create my own test data for this, which is of course a bit risky because I could misunderstand the standard and create wrong test data. And I, I think my plan of attack will be to generate test data 
to my best understanding and then try it out with um, converters and viewers implemented by other people. And if it works fine with them, I hope they support user-defined tables. If it works fine with them, then I will consider the test data valid probably and, and test my own code against it. So, um, Test data is the big question mark here. Internal combination operators, okay, this is also, I don't have a lot of test data, hardly any test data for that. It's not too difficult to implement. So, um, yeah, error handling is a big topic. I already have quite good error handling, much, much better, for example, than the reference code um, provided by ISO. This is some, this is really horrible what, what the ISO provides here and we will talk more about that. Yeah, then rule checking. My, my decoder is already checking a lot of rules. Even it is already in, in a way it's already too, doing too much checking because it is finding problems in, in lots of data that is out there. Especially it's finding problems in reference data, in, in, in uh, conformance data that is actually invalid according to the standard. And here it's always a difficult decision. How strict do you make your parser? Because in the end, nobody will, um, will pat you on the shoulder for, for writing a great and strict parser if you reject data that is uh, out there and is, is, is needed by users. So. That's a difficult call to make. Um, maybe we will convert several of these checks into from errors to warnings. Yeah, there are some other data consistency checks. Skip masks, I actually implemented them already. I can maybe show you an example later. Reused bitmap context. Yeah, this is just, I, I need to implement this. I think it's not too hard to implement. I have. I think one one test file, one or two test files for this, so it's not could be worse. Yeah, then then there is one feature. This is really a disaster. This feature, the the JB two standard allows many many different combinations of features, and almost all the features are. They are in two variants. So you have a Huffman coded variant and an arithmetic can be coded variant. The only thing that is only available in the arithmetic variant uh, is bitmap refinement. And maybe I should first show you an example of bitmap re refinement so you get the idea what it is about. It's an interesting feature and also nice to look at. Um, so let me first, let me first generate some example data so you can see how the bitmap refinement looks like. Actually, maybe I already have some data lying around. No, I, I deleted it. So let's, let's generate some, let's generate some data, so this will now fail horribly due to my debug mode. So maybe I should first, um, I should first deactivate my debug mode that does this, that you saw earlier. So, I have way too much debug code already here. This is showing the strips. I really need to clean up my debug code. I actually want to swap it out because it's getting so much that I want to swap it out to a side a sidekick file. It's just getting too much for readability reasons. 
On the other hand, I don't want to delete it completely because it's extremely useful when you're trying to hunt down problems. Okay, so now the test should pass again. It produces a lot of warnings about checks that I have disabled uh, because of the invalid conformance data. I had to temporarily disable some checks and I probably will patch the data so I can... I will patch the data probably so that I can activate the checks and I will also probably convert these from error messages into warning messages because probably also there is data out there in the wild that has these problems. So it's just there are lots of consistency rules specified in a standard and there's data out there, even data that calls itself conformance test data that does not obey these rules. And it's even worse. So some of these are really small things that are not too bad if you, if you violate the rules. Uh, but the worst thing is that the conformance data that you get from the ISO is, is mostly garbage. It's, it's really, I, I couldn't believe it at first. So I, the first examples worked and then I activated more examples and I just was getting all kinds of problems. And of course, first I expected that my own code was wrong. That's always what you expect first when you're in development. And I, I spent hours looking into these problems. And in most cases, I actually found that the data was at fault, so that the conformance data was actually garbage and, and in extreme ways. So for example, there is a file provided by the ISO that has one of these text regions. So something like that, but much simpler. And a text region always gets its symbol from a symbol dictionary and that the segment that encodes the text region must have a reference to this symbol dictionary segment. There can be uh, any number of these symbol dictionaries being referenced by the text region. But in order to get some symbols on the, on the page, you need at least some, you need at least one symbol dictionary to, to instantiate some symbols. And the, the data from the ISO contains a file that has a text region that references zero segments and still tries to instantiate symbols, which cannot work because you have no symbols to instantiate. So it's a comp it, it is on the face of it, it's invalid data and it's provided by the ISO as conformance data. And uh, I, it's unbelievable. It's really, I mean, um, how how can something like this get through these ISO processes? It's really a shame. I mean, the standard itself is fine. So you have, I mean, and it should be fine because you have to pay a lot of money for it. I mean, not a lot, but you have to pay money for it. And this, so this, this standard has 182 pages and it's actually quite well written and it's a, it's a nicely structured document and there are nice examples in there. So I have no beef with the standard itself, but the, com the electronic conformance data that you get is an absolute disaster. And also the reference software is an absolute disaster. So it's, it's horrible software. It does not implement the full standard. It's badly written without any error checking and so on. And it's also, wrong because the, the, the software obviously ex accepts these, these um, horribly invalid conformance data that they provide. Also the conformance data is much too small so it does not even come close to um, exercising all the features of the standard. It's really a disaster and this is, I mean, this is the organization that should take care of all our international standards and 
they want people to trust these standards to encode their data and make it usable for a long time and then they provide this kind of horrible uh, invalid uh, garbage data as, as conformance test data it's it's really a shame <clears throat> And so what I did is I tried to find other uh, JBIG2 example data, which is not that easy to find, especially data that is, has been independently verified uh, to verify it against, against the standard or, or reference implementations and so on. And what I found is the developers of GhostScript have actually uh, put up a, a page with some reference bitstreams and those are much higher quality than what is provided by the ISO. They also cover a lot more cases but still they have some mistakes in there so I actually still need to write the, because they ask here if you, if you, that if you write a decoder yourself that you try out these streams and that you write them if there's a problem they actually put that there in 1999, so I don't know if they still expect some feedback. But two of the files are clearly invalid and they also don't work. They, they actually don't even work with the, with the JBIG2 decoder of the GhostScript project. It, it, it runs into the same problems as, as does my decoder. All the other files I think are, are valid, they have only minor some minor problems maybe with these consistency checks, but they work and I can actually decode all of them uh, successfully now, except for two. And this is a topic that we will address later today. So almost all of them are decoded successfully as part of this test that just passed here. And I can show you some of the outputs. So the first thing I wanted to show you is the refinement because that's interesting to see how it works. So let me first show you um, what actually comes out of the refinement. It's this uh, letter, so a scan document again. And Yeah, no, not much to say about it. I just want to show you an example. For example, here it says la direction uh, générale, or something in French. So you see that here we have this uppercase D. And this is actually a result of, of refinement of, of the bitmap. And I can show you here um, a visual difference between the pre and post refinement uh, bitmaps. What you see in gray is the pixels that remain the same. Uh, pixels in red are ones that were made black by refinement that were white before and the cyan is the opposite. So cyan is what was black before and has been made white by refinement. So the idea of refinement is to change individual pixels here and there to improve the quality of the, of the rendering. And you see, for example, that this, this word, um, the la direction, or how it is pronounced, it started originally with an L. So the encoder put actually an L symbol there instead of the D. And in the refinement step, the symbol was changed from an L to a D. So you see that where the L had this corner, these pixels were removed by the refinement that you see in cyan here and actually the the arc of the D was created in refinement. Another nice example is here with a system uh, and this had an accent aigu from the symbol dictionary and this was changed to an accent grave by the refinement so that is a nice example of symbol refinement. So the idea being that first the decoder decodes a symbol that looks at least similar to the one that you actually want to encode and in the refinement step um, you just encode the differences and the differences are expected to compress very well because most of the pixels will be the same and um, the, difference will be, the differences will be quite predictable. 
and should compress well therefore so that is an example of refinement working here so you see also most of the symbols have small changes by refinement at the edges some have larger changes like um, there is an example of an I think an E turning into a C and something things like that mostly there yeah here for example here here you had an E originally it seems and this was changed into a actually I don't know was it changed into an O I think it was changed into an O yeah so that's the refinement working quite quite nicely and why did I want to show there was something I wanted to I wanted to oh yeah that was so refinement only works with arithmetic coding and now the question is what happens if your document is using mostly Huffman coding but you need some refinement and what they did for this is that you that the standard switches from Huffman coding to arithmetic coding in the middle of the data stream and this is actually not clearly specified in the standard how this is supposed to work it is um, not implemented in the reference implementation that you get from the ISO it is also uh, not included in the conformance data so I have no idea how this is supposed to work there are several ways you can imagine how it could work it is used in, in one example of from the uh, postscript people a uh, ghost script people but the the file doesn't make sense and is not is not decoded so it's this one the the example 14 uses this refinement aggregation with Huffman coding it does not work even with their own decoder it does not work with any other decoder that I tried so it does not work with my decoder it just the data stream doesn't make any sense and so I think this is this is a feature that I just will not implement because I think it's a nonsensical feature if you use Huffman coding refinement simply doesn't make a lot of sense uh, and I would be surprised if anybody out there is using this combination and I I have no way to test if my implementation would be correct if I would implement it so I will skip this I think and just issue an error message if this combination is in the in input data yeah aggregation could be made to work with half man coded symbols so maybe I will do that some checks are missing yeah these are I implemented this also the striping some cleanup to do yeah I did not implement comments they are just skip so far which is fine I think okay and then there's of course a lot of speed up work to to do I mean the decoder is not particularly slow but it's also it's wasting a lot of time in some of the steps especially in also in combination of the different regions on the page and so on so there's a lot of still a lot of low-hanging fruit for optimization and about the yeah the next thing I wanted to show is I now have a unit test actually it's more of an integration test that decodes a lot of these reference code streams and compares the result to um, reference bitmaps that are known or at least expected to um, represent the correct decoding result I do this now I think for 47 or so or even more how many are these 
and let's see. For 67 actually, 67 um, example files and they are all, all decoded correctly now. They use some interesting features. For example, one thing that I can show you is the halftone half -tone coding examples. They are fun. So I don't know where they start. So we have many examples of these letter. Yeah, this is, for example, <laughs> you see that, it, that, the, that the reference data comes from the 90s. So you have this picture of Ellie McBeal and it's a halftone uh, coded region. So you see this matrix of little patterns and they, they, this makes use of these special halftone features of JBIG2. It's also correctly decoded. These are also halftone examples with different kind of halftone matrices. So you see here the typical blending between black and white by using um, patterns with different amounts of black. Here you see actually some artifacts from striping that are not a problem of my decoder. They are actually a problem of the encoder that has been used. So they are actually also in the, this also looks, looks like this in the reference uh, bitmaps that I compare against. And you see that this page has been striped. So that's something different than the strips I talked about earlier. Striping means just that not the whole page is encoded at once, but in order to save memory in the encoder and so on, it is cut into stripes and every stripe is encoded individually and at the, in the end uh, the decoder has to reassemble these stripes and it seems that the decoder had some um, defects that it did not handle the stripe boundaries gracefully and so you get this, these visible stripes that shouldn't be there. Yeah, there are also some very high resolution example files that really should stress the arithmetic decoding a lot and it, everything works. You also have these funny files that have these uh, slanted um, halftone grids. So here you see that the grid used for the halftone patterns is actually slanted at 45 degrees. Um, and this also needs a special feature in, in the decoder that is already implemented that you will soon see how this works. So now we see the actual grayscale images that are part of the, that are actually encoded um, into the JVIG2 files that, so this half term coding works in the following way that you actually encode a grayscale image in the JVIG2 bit stream and you tell it, uh, you give it a, a so-called pattern dictionary with a little pattern to use for every grayscale value. And here you see, for example, some striped um, images that also have this 45 degree slant. So you see that actually the grayscale image is, um, is rotated by 45 degrees and encoded in this rotated orientation and the decoder has to um, to rotate it back in order to um, uh, in order to form this this grid and it has to skip regions that are blue here so these need to be skipped in the decoding because they are redundant and so all of this needs to be implemented, of course. And all of this is working. So I'm quite happy about that. Just to give you an idea what is, what is going on in a JBIG2 decoder and about all the features that you need to implement in order to support this crazy image format JBIG2. 
Okay, if anybody uh, knows about some more JPEG2 reference data, uh, I would be very happy to hear about that.